Red Cow Arcade. This time we have somebody of of note, of uh, of great relevance to what we do here and what we discuss here. We've got a YouTuber by the name of Dylan the Night Owl, Night with a K. Mm-hmm. And Yo. our audience will would know Dylan from um, a video that was circulating the last few weeks called "The Rise and Fall of AVGN." And you know, there's it's it's a really good piece, and we're gonna unpack it. But the thing that's most notable about it, or noticeable, is that it's six fucking hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very very brief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very, very brief. Very brief. Right, indeed. right. Actually, my Dylan, my favorite thing about so obviously you have this this uh, uh, facetious title where you're like a brief history of AVGN mm-hmm. yeah. in the title, but there there are still enough tone deaf people in the world who are like. <laughs> <laughs> Six hours is brief where he comes from, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That was like, so that was probably the funniest thing. And I'm, I'm going to just get those comments forever now. So it's, yeah. it's just the way it is. Um, but there was probably, I think I was getting anywhere to from like 50 to 100 comments. Um, oh, a wow. couple of those early like first few days of people like, brief? This isn't brief. Do you know the definition <laughs> of brief? You're yeah. a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> You're a liar. I'm like, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, um, AVGN commentary videos come and go. Mm-hmm. If you check that subreddit, they come and go. Some of them are very of the trollish variety. Some of the asshole-ish variety. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, th- sometimes you get a Red Cow Arcade. Sometimes you get a very funny AI voice rap. Other t- and I have watched. Um, I actually have. I've seen your content from before this. This was not my introduction. So you've done a lot of great stuff. Oh, thank you. And um, but what, you know, so I'm like, but my still my first instinct was, well, that's a long time. That that probably means that at the very best, he's you know, it, it, it's a lazily assorted group of clips with mm-hmm. extemporaneous narration where he's just like going off the cuff and that's how he achieved that runtime. It's not what you did at all. You, uh, you approach this like it was institutional research. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I, I really have to say it's, you know, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It was originally three videos, three kind of two hour documentaries. Fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three so, like, documentaries. so like, um, yeah, that's sort of like, what I do, I guess, um, on YouTube at this point is just like make documentaries about like internet people and stuff. Yeah. And originally it was two years ago that I started the AVGN thing. I'm like, I don't know how many parts it's going to take, but I was just kind of doing it one step at a time. Mm. Um, and after I did the movie, I was like, all right, the next one's going to be the last one. We're going to talk about screen wave and all that drama and stuff like that. And that was a year ago. Um, but something, t- I, I, I think I said it in the video at the beginning, it took so long to make that last part, mainly because I didn't quite know what my feelings were. So I was like, wow, this, this sounds really mean when I'm writing right now. And so I don't, I don't know, like, I didn't know how to approach that. And so I kind of like delayed it. Um, Interesting. And so, like, I, 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 like, not kidding, like, uh, some, like, like, my brother and, um, like, friends around me, like, you went through a whole fucking character arc writing this goddamn script. <laughs> uh, because I just, <laughs> like. really grown <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, like, I, I, I kept, like, changing things about it um, and w- the way I wanted to approach it. Um, and so, yeah, that last part took, it just took forever. And then by the time I, f- I, I actually got it done, I'm, like, you know. The other parts have already kind of been copyright claimed by ScreenWave at this point. Um, and, like, they're completely hidden in the algorithm by now. It's just dead. Mm. So I'm mm. like, it'd be kind of weird to just put out the last part. I could, but it might be better to repackage this whole thing. It's like one video. Um, but, like, have all four. And I, I didn't just, like, just put them together. I re-recorded um, all of it. Um, so that it could be like with the better microphone. Cause I think at, at the beginning I was using like a kind of a shitty microphone. Oh, nice. Um, it's kind of a brilliant move because despite, you know, you, you conventional wisdom says six hours is going to drive people away. But mm-hmm. in a way, I think it kind of drew people in. It was like, look, 
if you're if if, if you've got six hours to talk to me, yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I, I've, to I've I've talked about action button reviews, uh, you know, Tim Rogers and how he makes like six hour like theses that are part memoir, part that and i consume mm. those <laughs> so there's an yeah. audience for it obviously for this kind of like really well researched well produced content i mean there's a lot like you pulled a lot of clips in this so. and i didn't think you you know i i, I have nothing but compliments for because we made some comments about it um the when i was like at the halfway mark and i was like this mm-hmm. thing's pretty good and then i finished it and now that i've seen it as a as a finalized piece i have a lot of nice things to say about it it's it's like I was really impressed that you weren't redundant, um, hmm. you know, because you could fill six hours saying the same thing over and over again. And yeah, you really, you really didn't do that. And then also um, very impressed by your ability to source the correct clip for the correct idea. I imagine that that was I'm, I'm a video editor. I imagine that that like, that's really like the most time consuming piece is you hmm. have, you know, it starts with like, OK, I know I want to express this idea. And I also know just from my own memory, from my own familiarity with the guy, I remember like, OK, yeah, I remember he was putting out those BTS videos around the time that he released the movie. But which ones do I need to illustrate the point that I need to make? You know, mm-hmm. or and then and, and then where when can you find I find it? Yeah. Yeah. And then when you actually do, God willing, find the clip, you're like, oh, actually, you kind of like, you know, discover your own biases and have to rewrite it and re-express it. And, mm-hmm. and I, you know, so it, elo- eloquently written. But if I if there was one thing I could say was the the best part of the whole thing was, you know, we even like so I, I, like you, I've been a fan since I was young. I think I'm a little older than you. I, I was mm-hmm. a, a big fan of his when I was in. Uh, well, I discovered him when I was in college. The TMNT video, mm-hmm. um, like most people. Right. Like you yeah. said in the video. I, 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 my first was the Dr. Drew Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is behind me right <laughs> oh, now. Did you put it up? Genius. I put it up. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was so well. I was already out of college and I was working and I just remember like, I don't know, it was, it was somewhere, maybe it was on screw attack or something. And I saw, it was just like, Oh, I remember that in the arcade store. So I clicked it and it's just this dude like drinking a beer, just being like, <laughs> let me, this thing is bullshit. <laughs> and then yeah. I was hooked. Well, it was kind of, it was not yet heard of to really even perseverate on an old game for very long. Like, mm-hmm. You know, let alone, and it was one of the first times in my early adulthood that I heard somebody being, um, uh, obviously he wasn't being appropriately critical. He was being hyperbolic, but he was, mm. it, it was the, like, you know, when you grow up with a video game, you just accept it for what it is. You're really not, you're not critically minded. And so like to gr- grow old, be able to nitpick it accurately, but then be over angry about it. That was the genius of it. And of course, since then. Not as novel of an idea, but at the time yeah. it was a very novel idea, and it connected with it connected with those of us who grew up around the same time. I'm a bit younger than him. He was born in like '80. I'm, I'm born in '86. That's mm-hmm. a, a fascinating element I want to talk about in a minute. Is your like how your age ranks into the whole thing? But mm-hmm. um, you didn't skimp at all on setting the foundation for like. Not only am I a fan. But, like, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you why this character works, the time and place that it was in. Like, you reminded a lot of – we have a Discord where we were chatting about the video, and you reminded a lot of us about why we love this this character in this channel so much. And mm-hmm. it really kind of, like, took us back to that place. And because you ultimately sort of have to be critical by the end, it I felt it was very earned. I felt it was like, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not just uh, – I'm not here for the uh, – uh, uh, for the clicks, you know? Right. I, you know, that's, I'm glad you said that because that is definitely like something I want to really get across was like, this was such an important series. Mm-hmm. And it's weird to say that. Like, and I know it, but like, it was, it was. I, and totally. I, oh my God. Absolutely. Yeah, as I, I as think I, all three of us here are, wouldn't be creating videos. <laughs> right. <laughs> so like, I, you know, and that was something I really reflected on as I was, like, making the scripts and stuff for these videos. I'm like, wow, you know, this this really meant a lot to me. This this is, like, really something. Um, I think so, you understand AVGM better than he does, by the way. Yeah, you know, I was I, I, I thought that sometimes because I'm like, you know, James, <laughs> you just – I. <laughs> like, you, you did – you you, with your, your gold and silver age thing – 
Mm -hmm. I thought you did a great job being like, all right, like this is him at the height of his powers. This is him at like a a, a level of quality he sustained until this period. Like it's, it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the ages were great, yeah. It requires you understanding when the character works and when the character doesn't. Mm -hmm. Um, Which I think, I think you have a knack for. So yeah, so tell me about that a little bit. The, um, so you, uh, do you mind mentioning what year you were born? Oh yeah, I was born in 1995. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's exactly ten years younger than me. Right. So the you know the the sixteen bit era was basically ninety three to ninety six, right, mm-hmm. or ninety two to ninety six, something like that. So you kind of you were born sort of after the sixteen bit era. Yeah. He's all about the eight bit era. I, I'm just curious. You know, I have a four year old. Um, she's growing up with retro games because they're they're really kind of baked into even like modern mm-hmm. console experiences now. Did how, what was your like introduction to to retro gaming? Was it through the nerd to some degree? So it was definitely through the nerd to some degree. It was one of those things where, um, you know, I I grew up. I think I was around five years old when I first started playing video games. And I remember like it was like I can I can move things on the TV. It's like crazy at the totally. time, but um, I think it was just sort of because I think I grew up with the PlayStation One and Two mostly at first. Um, and then after that, through online and even, like, there's a channel, which I plan on making a documentary about this at some point in the future, called G4, um, which introduced mm, yeah. me to a lot of older games. I'm like, I, I want to play these. But, I, you know, I, I, there, wasn't, there wasn't, like, easy access to emulators and things like that. So right. I had to actually buy the consoles. And so I, that was, like, my birthday present. I get the consoles and I play these older games. Um and James definitely, like, his series introduced me to a lot of that stuff. Um, how did you even stumble into it at such a, such a young age? And so, what was, like, how, how did the profanity and all that, like, did your family try to keep you away so, from it? Or? Funny, funny story with that. So um, I, I kind of fumbled into it because um, I was just looking up video game-related videos on YouTube just to see what would come up. Um, and... I kept hearing through other game people kept saying, uh, comparing people to this guy called Angry Video Game Nerd. Like that, I didn't, I wasn't introduced to him through his videos at first. It was through other people. I'm like, who is this guy? Everyone seems to know who he is. And so I go to him. The first video he had, the newest video he had out was Atari porn games at the time. (laughs) All right. (laughs) (laughs) But the first video I clicked on was actually the Bugs Bunny one. Um, which and, is kind of perfect for a 10-year-old. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So yeah. I was like, this, this is hilarious. I loved it. Every part of it. Um, like, I, I was just laughing. The part where he, like, shits on the bugs. I was like, what? Oh, my God. And I, yeah, bet, I, kind of, I, bet, I bet a 10 or an 11-year-old would watch that. And I, I suppose, so if that was, like, 06, 07. So you're, like, a, you're like a preteen. You're, a t- mm-hmm. or, you're j- early teen. You're probably watching that going, like, yeah, it's super funny. It's about something that I I enjoy retro video games, and I could imagine my friends and I making the same video. I, like you know, it's not. Yes. it wasn't made in a studio in Hollywood. It wasn't. It's not Lord of the Rings. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, my friends and I could make this. It, was there like some element of that for you? There was, and that was actually a big thing, um, which kind of made me enjoy. So like, eventually, it's like I'm like really close with my I, my uh, three siblings. And I'm like the oldest one. And so I'd show it, I I start showing them the videos and it's funny. Like my two younger sisters thought it was super duper funny. Uh, and of course, uh, at first I think my mom was like a little bit concerned, like, it's all this cursing and stuff like that. And it was even that point where I'm like... There's a lot of shit in that bunny's face. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Bugs Bunny, but there's shit. <laughs> but I think what I actually... Because um, I, I, I kept wanting to show my family, like, the videos and stuff. Um, and eventually, I was like, he made the Monster Madness videos. And I showed uh, my mom that at the time. And I think that kind of convinced her, like, oh... Okay, because she, she's like really into horror movies and stuff like that. She kind of, awesome. you know, doesn't. So she's like, okay, this guy's actually like, you know, pretty genuine and, you know, knows what he's talking you know, So I think after that, I kind of convinced everybody. Um, that and so, makes sense. Yeah. Because if, if he can put together a cogent <laughs> series of thoughts about <laughs> movie history or something, then it, it does shine a, a light on the profane stuff 
a nicer light on the. Per- it's like okay, yeah. clearly he's joking. Clearly he's not just some deranged freak. Right, yeah. exactly. Like he's right. Shitting on bunnies or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the Monster Madness videos I thought were pretty revolutionary on their own mm-hmm. because there wasn't any like there wasn't anything like that cataloging that much. Even like especially uh-huh. horror content, but like <laughs> movies in general, it was just like it was cool to see somebody being like, "These are a bunch of old movies that I like that I like," and mm-hmm. I, I, you didn't see that until really James, or at least it wasn't popular popularized. Yes, yeah, totally. Um, I remember. I, I, I remember. Not. I remember watching the Monster Madnesses and like. Because the first the first season, the 0- 07 season, was like pretty much like horror one hundred and one, mm-hmm. and yet. Most of us, you know, you know all these movies, but you haven't necessarily seen them all. Right. Maybe you've seen half, or maybe you're younger and you have. You're, you're like, yeah, I've seen, I've seen it referenced on Tiny Toons. That's about it. You know, <laughs> right. it's, yeah. So it's, it was really cool to listen to to like a con, a contemporary talk about them with some degree of reverence, with some degree of filmmaking experience. Yeah, and I always really admired. I've said this elsewhere, but I've always admired how he was able to very quickly before it was done expertly by channels all the time. He was able to diversify content on the channel as soon as AVGN took off mm-hmm. and not it, that's actually one of the weird things about him finding himself boxed into AVGN now. Yeah. It's like he did a great job getting out of that boxed in <laughs> thing early on, but now has somehow found himself trapped there again. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of like weird as well. Um, because yeah, that's why I say like, I think in the video, somebody say he was on fire in 2007 because of just how yeah. much content of different varieties even he was making. Um, totally. So, yeah, it, it's always, like, kind of weird for me now when I think, well, he's like, he, he's, he, oh, it's like, I have to do AVGN. It's the only thing people watch. I don't even know. It, it's comments like that where it's sort of like, I don't know if he's ever said that exactly. That's kind of what he said through kind so of, many yeah. words. I'm like, do you even know, like, how people, like, enjoy you just for being you like they, they would probably I, genuinely I before, yeah. he, the, the product he sells is is him and his perspective although i think i think 2021 shows us that that mike is the other side is is an important other yes. side of the coin yeah you mm-hmm. do need you need a uh you know a frankie needs an ej and an ej needs a frankie you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's t- it's tough to do this stuff in a vacuum yeah, it must that, especially for your, for the video you did, maybe even giving it a little bit of a pause and a space was helpful because so much stuff happened in the past year. <laughs> it did. It did, actually. Um, like, that was part of why I was like, okay, I'm going to wait because stuff kept coming out. And I was like, I'm, I'm really glad that I decided to just, like, take a pause and see where it went. Um, because, yeah, you know, I... I was kind of on board with like, you know, I think that was, that was a part I actually added in to the second part of the uh, documentary was I added a part where it showed all the times Mike Matei has talked about like the jokes he wrote or the things he wrote. Cause I don't think a lot enough people actually know about that. I was so impressed with your ability to find those clips because you had to dig through streams. (laughs) I don't even know how many, Uh, how did you, did you, Okay. Can I, guess, so, can I guess what one of your methods was and you tell me whether or not you did this? What? Or mm-hmm. I'll suggest a method that you didn't think of. <laughs> so we'll <laughs> see. Did you did you use the the auto transcript and then control F for, for certain words? So okay, so here's kind of what I did. And there's a few there's a few cut shortcuts I was able to find. So like with all the videos of AVGN, I just downloaded them all. And for the movie stuff, I just had to look and find them all and get all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of those stuff are unlisted now, um, which is whatever. But with somebody Mike put Mattei, together a cheat sheet. Somebody put together a cheat sheet of like, here's all the unlisted stuff from various sources. Yes. Um yeah. and so that helped a lot. But there's actually a, a video that someone made of Mike Matei referencing his work with AVGN. And so that Not video, okay. I think it's like an hour long or so. Um, and so I just basically had to watch, just watch that and just take Got the it. parts uh, with that. Um, nice. That would be quite, you know, if I had to go through stream clips, I would. But luckily, you know, it's like work smart 
sometimes if you can find someone who's already done the work for you, then yeah, definitely look, there's a lot of that. there's a lot of us obsessive freaks yeah. out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you now may be the king of the obsessive freaks with a six hour documentary. That's yeah, nice I'd say day. so. Because, you know, that's like I, it's it's great because um, I'd say probably. I'd say probably about 80% of the uh, feedback has been really positive and, you know, it's people talking work. about like their um, own feelings with it. Um, and, and, you know, I'm really happy about that. You know, then there is a 20%, which like, you know, take issue with one group, either they don't like the length, um, they, if they're of the mind that James can do no wrong. And so this is blasphemous. There was, a, there was a meme going around about you just today. Did you see it? I haven't. No. Well, here's your exclusive, your Red Cow Arcade, your Red Crow Red Arcade. Red Crow. Um, yeah, it was like, you know, it's like the the buff dog, mm -hmm. and then there's like the shitty dog. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, the beta British it's dog. A, it's like, um, uh, I think the buff dog is like, a a a AVGN is amazing, and uh, uh, he... Uh, he's he's a YouTube creator who has done the least harm or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then the shitty dog is like, I just watched a six hour video about what a piece of shitty. But that's not true. Man. It's not it's, true. It's, like, it's not true. It was no, like an know, hour and a half of how shitty he is. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like <laughs> th that's like one of the things which um, because I I, I want to uh, mention this in a minute because there was actually a little bit of Twitter drama. Um, oh. Which I I try to avoid. What? Yeah, there's Twitter drama with this. Um, on so, Twitter.com. Yeah, on Twitter.com. So okay, so here's how it kind of went. So, of course, in my own comment section, there's a lot of people who like you know, it's like you made a six hour video shitting on James. What the fuck is wrong with you? Blah blah. blah. And it's like, like that's not what I did. I know you didn't watch the video. So yeah. it's like, and I understand, I understand, not everyone has six hours to go and uh, uh, even, even a couple, it's, it's whatever, perfectly fine. But like, just like assuming it's like six hours of shitting on, it's like crazy. But then, so like the like, title does say rise and fall. Yeah, exactly. And brief. <laughs> right, and brief. <laughs> you, I was lied to. I was lied to. <laughs> um. And, you know, because I thought that was kind of, you know, it was funny, like, before I get it, I just thought that was a funny title when I wrote it. So it's like, there's been at least a good several Twitter threads of, like, someone uh, taking the video or the thumbnail or whatever and, like, six hours? Crazy, blah, blah, and then, like, going on and on. And then there's a bunch of people, like, who also didn't watch it, like, say, oh, this guy must be crazy. Well, then uh, this one guy, I forget his name. Um, but he, I guess he's friends with some of the Screen Wave crew, um, put it up. And then Tony responded to it. Oh, I did see this. I did, he, Tony was like, yeah, I watched it. It was kind of fun. <laughs> 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 it was, it was uh, yeah, I saw a little bit of that. Yeah, I was like, uh, you know, and then like there were some other YouTubers that I, I didn't even know were necessarily connected with Screen Wave. They're like, this guy sounds crazy. This guy is nuts. It just go. It's like, oh, oh I see. Can I, can I tell you that? Uh, I, you know, I'm not going to reveal names. There have been really big YouTubers who clearly James was an inspiration or their fans. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they've stumbled into our videos. And they've been like, I totally agree with everything. <laughs> 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 um, because the truth is, is if you're passionate about content creation and you're passionate about pop culture, you probably intersect on this topic. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah. Is, is there something inherently crazy about a six hour documentary about something seemingly so insignificant? It's like, yeah, on its face, probably. But the mm. truth is you're talking about a YouTube creator who's maybe one of the most influential in the space mm -hmm. and he has a 15 year legacy. Yeah. And, and and ongoing, yeah. and so it's like, well, then you know, I, look, Ken Burns ain't gonna make the movie, right? And so, it's, you know, I I I, I, I live for like well produced YouTube content by somebody who actually really cares about the thing. I'm mm. not gonna get it on TV. It's like one no. of my favorite things about YouTube actually yeah. is is content like yours. Yeah, well, thank and, you. And it, it, it's so and his 
his fall, James's fall, is so interesting because as a, as a content creator, you're constantly thinking like, "Am I jumping the shark? Am I? Is this like <laughs> totally. authentic? Am I doing?" And uh, totally. so like you're going through the same crises he's going through. Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> do I need a couple slobs? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> like it's one of those things where um, I. <sighs> I remember really like because th- I was like, am I going crazy? Is it really bad? You know, and that was like, I think I addressed that in the video. It's like one of the things I kept seeing people say is like, no, 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 no. It's not that uh, the content, new content is bad. It's that you grew up and it's not funny anymore. Um, and it's for someone who did grow up with it. I'm like, are they is is that the case? So like, that's why I, I, I took the time to rewatch all the old stuff and really like write down my thoughts as I went along. Um, I'm like, Oh, you know, what? that's a good point. Cause it's, it, that's a good point. Cause it's, it's hard to speak empirically about these things. Mm-hmm. First of all, because it's subjective and yeah. it's art and you know, so you know, everybody has different tastes and there's no accounting for it. But then there's, it's also difficult to account for how, to what extent you grow with a creator. Yeah. So they're, the creator's growing, you're growing, their stuff, their old stuff might not stand up, but you can still say, ah, but I recognize that it was quality for what it was at that time. Mm-hmm. So it's just, real, it's, it's, it's like a moving train, you know, everything kind of, you know, a comedy is a good example of this where like, you know, it, it, it rarely can exist in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a point in time thing. So mm-hmm. therefore, if somebody wanted to be overcritical or undercritical of somebody like James, uh, it would be really easy for them to do a smoke and mirrors thing where they're like, you just don't like that it wasn't the way it was when you were a kid. Or when you were a kid, you cut it a lot more slack. Or like you can just like keep playing that mm-hmm. game and it'd be really hard to nail anything down and say, well, look, you know, a, a fair analysis would say this about the content. And that's what that's kind of like the attention you gave mm-hmm. it, um, which, I, I, yeah, it was really impressive. Thank you. And I, I also wanted to commend it for um, – uh, it it does work audio only as well somehow. Yeah, like it, it does kind of function as a podcast. Yeah, a lot of people were listening to it on their runs in our uh, Discord and uh, getting a lot out of it. Yeah, yeah, I um I try to do my best with uh, my videos to have that be the case because um, I get a lot of comments since I make really long videos usually um, with people like saying you know I do night shifts and I like want need something to like get through or truck driver what whatever thing may be and so it's like you know i i try to make the audio as good as possible and you know speaking of that that does kind of address the uh elephant in the room is the fact that that video has got tons of filters over it um right and that is unfortunately the price i had to pay for that video to exist basically um do you have a clean just out of curiosity do you have a like kind of a a locally stored clean version of it? I, or could you easily? I, I do. Um, and I've considered, um, you know, have, like putting that up as like a, a separate thing at some point. Daily motion or something? Like, yeah. You know, put it on some other shitty yeah. <laughs> that nobody goes to. I did want to ask you that at one point. I was like, because I, I, I did an audio book once. And, you know, so reading narration and then flubbing and then having to re-edit all of the times you flub. Mm-hmm. And then if you have to record something later to insert mm-hmm. you somehow, even though you're sitting in the exact same place with the exact same mic, you can never nail the exact, like, you know, like you have morning throat oh, yeah. or you have afternoon throat and now you sound different. <laughs> and so suddenly there's this, <laughs> this abrupt part of the narration where you sound grisly. It's like um, yeah, the nasal version of yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then you got to re-listen to the whole thing to make sure that it doesn't have any errors in it. Um, mm-hmm. and you're like, I, there's no way I'm listening to my whole audio book all over again. Like, or, or you do, you're like, fine, I'm going to have to, cause it's the only way I can quality control this thing. So you listen to it in fast motion and then you miss the error anyway, <laughs> the one error that existed in the seven hours, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Did you have all those experiences? I did. I, I, I did all that and more. I had, there's several sections in the video where it's like, oh no, I forgot this. I need to add this in. And so I did that. And actually one of the things I had to add in, like, last minute was whenever, um, which actually ended up, I feel like, making the video way stronger by the end, was that one where it's, like, he'd talk about nostalgia, uh, where he's, like, this is where I'm do- going with the channel. It seems sort of like a maybe positive direction, you know? Yeah. Um, when he made yep. that, I'm, like, whoa, that speech, it lines so much with, like, the themes of what I'm trying to say here at the end. 
Um, and so that part, I had to just like do a new like voice thing and just say, uh, and also, this is going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, also. also, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's it's a pain in the ass. For anybody who wants to, to dog on you for, uh, for making something long, it's just like, dude, it's a lot harder. It's a, it, it, it took so many weeks to edit that whole thing together. Um, and then even more trying to figure out what filters and what things I can use to like trick the copyright system, basically. You editing in Premiere? Um, I'm editing in Sony Vegas. Um, yeah, I have I uh, I have some experience with Premiere. The main reason I got Sony Vegas is because like it's the one I I've paid for at this point. It's like I'm most familiar mm-hmm. with it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, um, and luckily now I used to have the problem. Um, back whenever uh, I got it through maybe not so official means uh, where it would crash all the time. Um, and that was such, uh, you know, I had to constantly, I, I still have the habit of saving over and over and oh, over, yeah, that's and over a good, again. It's a good habit. <laughs> so I still do that because I'm afraid <laughs> things are going to get lost. But I luckily since I like, I'm like, you know what, uh, I'm going to buy it. You know, not the, I, I got like the $50 one. It's like, oh, you'll have to pay $50 <laughs> again next year. Like, that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, everything's on like those subscription based things now, huh? Yeah, it is at this yeah. point. No. Yeah. 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 We, uh, uh, some of your filters were like VHS artifacting, mm-hmm. you know? And I, so does that come with Sony Vegas or, cause it, there's nothing like that for Premiere. You can't, you, you, Red Giant has a really good one. In fact, rental reviews used it a mm-hmm. lot. Um, but, uh, uh, red giant stuff is like $200 a year. It's not cheap. And that's just for plugins. I basically make them myself. Um, oh, okay. so the way I do it basically is, uh, every, like I'll either take like stock footage, um, okay. from YouTube or websites. Um, like, and then I kind of combine them together, put a purple filter over it. Um, basically I've been, stuff call- like I've that. been calling that the Ivan news filter. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> uh, it just like universally described. <laughs> it kind of looks, you know, unique enough, and that's basically all I do. It's not that difficult or anything for those. Um, but yeah, stock footage is um, really helpful for like kind of making the effect, sort of, or putting it on an overlay. Um, so yeah, it seems to me like the the audio is what trips the the content ID more than video. In my experience. Yes, it definitely does. Um, it's one of those, it's why I, uh, now I did have Either the word, I, it, it clarify. I'm glad now that it clarifies, like, which parts. And it's like, okay, yes. you know, and it actually got irritating because I'm like, all right, so it's only these two parts. I'll edit that and cut it down and I'll have this thing and n- new filter or whatever. It's like, oh, actually, there's also these five ones now that we've... <laughs> wow, Here's thank you. you. I'm glad. You know, I, it'd be super cool if you could just, like, lay it all out the first time so I could just so, do yeah. it all that time as to how so to you do it you, you nudge something in the timeline that, like, <laughs> that angered the algorithm. I mean, are we are we talking, like, because uh, there, again, for people that don't know, there's content id matching where they're like this is not a strike and the video is not blocked but some of the revenue sharing might be with the content mm-hmm. creator and the, and you uh, they, they call it partially uh, or uh, a monetization ineligible so really your only penalty is that you can't monetize mm-hmm. the video and sometimes depending on the video that's like a you know if, if if you feel as though the thing that you included is worth it you'll go like eh, i'll let the monetization go mm-hmm. on this one um but then there's the other thing where it's like the content creator decided like we're gonna we're going to block you in most regions. And so literally people won't be able to watch the video. It sounds like that's what ScreenWave does. Yeah, basically it it did a combination of both. Like I did get to a point where it was like not blocking it now, but it was in that. But I was like, you know what? I've, I've done enough work on this. I'm going to try to make it where it actually does, you know, it's like, um, but no, like the, I've gotten, I've gotten lazy before where I've been like, "Eh, I just won't monetize it. It, It's normally EJ who's like, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Get over, get over the finish line. Mm-hmm. On this. Yeah, well, uh, I think especially I feel like there's some penalties in the algorithm for being like too copyright, even yeah, even if it's not a strike true. there. I think feel like there's some there is penalties. 
Um, oh. I've I can like I know it's like I don't know just my experience, but anytime I've uploaded a video that got copyright claimed, and I'm like, because especially in the beginning, I'm like, well, I'm not making money anyway, so I don't care, um, you know. And so, but every every time that happened, that video would not do anywhere near as well as the ones that did. Even if I wasn't making money off of it, it's like YouTube's like, nah, we're we're not gonna put this in the algorithm now or something. It's like, oh. All right. Yeah. Well, then th well, this is going to promote. Yeah. Yeah. This is the penalty totally. they don't tell you about. Um, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, ah. that's true. I, uh, we, you know, we we've had low viewed content for a very long time. We made peace with it long ago. Hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just make stuff for the hell of it. Yeah. We and, make it uh, for a group of group of <laughs> accolades, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. yeah. Yeah. For, yeah for, for big YouTube channels only. Um, yeah, yeah, it's so weird. We got we've we've gotten a few uh, comments from bigger YouTube channels, so it's like we're, uh, Frankie said we're the YouTubers YouTube like Norm Macdonald, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and only them. But the, it was the you know when we made the the first like Zoom call, the the one that got like eighty thousand, which is a lot for us. Mm -hmm. It, it, it was I, I remember I just uploaded it, being like, oh, it's a clip from our podcast. Go subscribe to our Patreon if you happen to find it. And I, and and somebody you know dogged on it, and I was like, well, don't worry, because none of our videos get any co any counts anyway. And they were like, eh. they were like, so you never the algorithm might sweep this one up. I'm like, yeah, I've been waiting for the algorithm to sweep something up for a long time. <laughs> sure, sure enough, yeah, that it's, was the one. It's me on a Zoom call with EJ with short shorts. Yeah, and I'm wearing like a T-shirt, my unpainted shelves. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like God damn it, they they you know because there's no copyright strikes and it's long and it's about something that has good uh, SEO and, and it has it had they, James they, Rolfe in the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, do, do, do like, you mind uh, me asking what your background is? Uh, do you have a filmmaking background or or, if, or you, did you study it at all or any of that? So, um, so basically, I'm like as far as like I I, I finished college as like an English major. Um, and so I'm like really into writing and, you know, all sorts of stuff. But through that, I kind of spent, because you don't get a job with an English major thing. Uh, you just don't. Um, but you, you can apply those skills and like do other stuff. And so I took like a bunch of film classes, um, like fucking, uh, awesome. you know, flaw, whatever the thing, whatever seemed interesting I went into and film was definitely something I was always interested in. I've, you know. I think it's because, and this is also thanks to James as well. So, um, f since I was really young, I have always been trying to make some kind of video type stuff. Um, even this channel, um, while it's the only thing that's really been, I guess, successful and kind of took off, um, I had other stuff. Like, I think the earliest thing I ever did was I had a camcorder, which I'm glad it was on tapes and there was no way easily to upload it to the internet because it was terribly bad. Um, but it was me pretending to be the AVGN, actually. Um, oh, reviewing wow. a shitty game that we got. It was like some kind of Spider-Man SNES uh, cross X-Men game or something. I don't, I don't know, but... Oh, yeah. I, um, I, I remember just playing through the thir first level and... Um, you know, also, and I just share that with my family, basically, you know, um, I used to make, um, what they call AMVs or anime music videos where I just like take the anime and then edit it around the music. Um, and while the, I didn't really upload almost any of those, uh, I probably made a good 200 of those as a wow. kid just because I thought it was fun. Um, that's, you know, I was, uh, not to get like person I was actually homeschooled so uh that kind of had a different perspective on time I had I had a lot of time to do whatever mm. you know I got school done at the beginning of the day and then I just had the rest of the day to do whatever I wanted and so I did a lot of so you, like you just explore kind of like oh maybe I could pick up guitar or maybe yeah. I could learn a video editor or, yeah that kind of yeah yeah so I just That's tried awesome. like all sorts of stuff. I tried like um you know writing which I ended up really enjoying obviously um video editing I tried to play the piano at one point I got I remember even got like a really cheap piano and it's I, I got like a good two months into it and I realized oh wait a minute this thing doesn't have like the thing where if you hold it it like makes the noise longer it's like oh this is a toy <laughs> 
<laughs> like, all right. That's awesome. I, um, and it makes so much sense that you're an English major because I think that's what a lot of video essayists are missing mm-hmm. is that kind of um, yes. more of the an essayist point of view. And mm-hmm. so that I think that helps your work immensely. Yeah, and, and, and nobody has, you know, going into a six hour video about AVGN, nobody has a way. It's like, it, I bet a lot of people come to the video with a bias of like, oh, I've watched, I've watched people rage out on the internet <laughs> about somebody they, you know, so it's like they come in with this bias yeah. against other kinds of, you know, a type of creator. I, I do, you know, if in the in the weird event that somebody didn't watch your thing and is listening to this, I really encourage them to take a look because it's more eloquently written, more thoughtfully written. Um, uh, this is a this, this, this is a high IQ individual. Thank you. We're dealing with. Thank you so much. Uh, just, just, despite the uh, the video filters, which I yeah, I think it's like I actually thought it was a brilliant way to solve the problem because otherwise, like you say, the the cost of it is like the alternative is the video doesn't exist. Yeah, I love the Pretty copyright much. owl. <laughs> yeah, you know it's very funny too. Yeah, the copyright owl. That was like so. I was like uh, I rendered that video seven times. Um, I was like talking to my friends about it. I'm like, this has got to be the one. So I have to keep putting stuff up. And at some point, I'm like, I don't know how to fix this at this point because it's not like they keep finding a way. And so like, <laughs> I'm going to make a copyright out. I'm going to put it on screen and just to see if something – I'm like, I, I didn't even expect it to happen. And somehow that worked. And I was like, there's no way this keeps – and yeah. Because um, luckily the one good thing with YouTube is like if – is copyright claimed you'll probably know within about an hour um yeah if that yeah, yeah right it, like Did, have you have you ever has somebody ever copyright uh, has anybody ever, ever pirated your content so you got notified by youtube like hey somebody yes uploaded actually your stuff? um yeah. and i've i've never done anything about it because uh, actually it's funny i some of the other content i make um is like iceberg videos where i like go in depth with which is also funny because uh like normally those videos kind of work like top 10 lists i guess but in a weird order um i approach those as like i'm gonna talk about this thing for hours and hours and go in ultra in depth with the thing um but so it's a lot of fun um but the thing is though um a lot of streamers like to take those videos and just stream them in full commentary or no right. sometimes they have comments some because sometimes i'm like oh i wonder what they have to say oh they didn't say anything <laughs> so, but i, I you know yeah. I, as far as i'm concerned i am happy like with that i, I don't um you know because like well your your work is kind of a fair uc creative commons type idea yeah it's, exactly you, you, i i you're you're producing like a uh, uh, special interest type work yes um so yeah i i i'm you know, I'm perfectly fine with people, um, you know. Well, I br- so I bring up the, hey, have you had it in reverse thing? Because it's happened to us a few times, too. And for anybody who's never been through the process, the way, you know, because maybe some people are listening to this going like, oh, it's ScreenWave watching the six hour video <laughs> and being like, uh, uh, uh. you know, and, and nothing like that's going on. It, uh, YouTube will do its best to match audio or video to an existing mm-hmm. uh, video that's been uploaded. It notifies the uh, the uploader, and they'll say, "Hey, you know, from this this time code to this time code, this video over here uh, lifted your stuff. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do about it?" And then the content creator can say, "I'd like to strike it down." Mm-hmm. And they actually have to go through a little bit of a, an arduous pro not arduous, but they ha- they actually have to fill out a form and like sign it, mm-hmm. you know, digitally sign it and say, "Yeah, no, really, they should take this down." Um, and I think you can set for, if you're a bigger channel, I think you can set some defaults for that. Like always mm-hmm. take down if this happens and this, this sort of Apparently, thing. Apparently I, um, I looked into it, um, with ScreenWave media and I could be wrong. Cause I'm not like working on the inside with that, but at least their website seems to advertise it. Like it'll be automatic, like instantly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so. <laughs> I have some experience with that with screen, with ScreenWave. Cause I, I you probably don't know this. I re-edited the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he has his I, own Hobbit version <laughs> of the Angry Video Game. Condensing yeah, exactly. all of that it's, movie it's, into its essential parts. <laughs> it's the Tolkien edit. Yeah, the Tolkien. <laughs> um, <laughs> I CG'd back in Keely and Feely. <laughs> no, um, that's a deep cut for anybody who knows what yeah. the fuck I'm talking about. But anyway, um, 
No, I did it in 2014. I, I, I took like the 720p copy or whatever that came from Vimeo. Mm -hmm. And it was a, an editing exercise. I wasn't, um, I had nothing to do with anti-AVGN yeah. culture at the time. I was a fan. I went to go see the movie screened in a movie theater, for God's sakes. But I went home and I was like, really, you know, like when you see a movie that didn't work mm. out and you wish it did. And so there's kind of a, like, you know, Phantom Menace being a very good example. Like you sort of wrestle with it yeah. for a while. You're kind of like, wait, t don't I like it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it? It takes several weeks before you can understand your own opinion. So being a, a video guy, I said, well, why don't I actually go through it and see, you know, just as an exercise in storytelling, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll, because there, there's no better way to understand what doesn't work about it than um, trying to reconstruct it mm -hmm. yourself. And that's when you actually start to, you know, because you're, as Red Letter Media would say, your brain did, you, know, you, you don't really, you can walk away with emotional impressions of like, well, it felt over long or it felt like uh, that arc didn't track or whatever, mm -hmm. but. But when you actually go through it scene by scene and you go, okay, what information have we conveyed? What information do we still need to convey for future things to make sense? Mm -hmm. Then you start to see the actual building, you know, foundational problems with the thing. Now, I'm not saying I fixed it, but I cut 50 minutes out of it. And they were an easy 50 yeah. minutes. Um, because, and you, I was like, dude gets mm -hmm. it. I was like, he should see my cut. <laughs> um, that whole GameStops thing is, is not only unnecessary mm -hmm. as you said but it's it's it it like it's it's uh, it's presence in the film causes so much more character and plot confusion it does than if it was just removed yeah i agree and you can remove it clean <laughs> like you you, you, you you can just go blank <laughs> and the movie and the movie improves because yeah then you don't have this problem of like why does he have a day job you don't repeat information about et mm -hmm. which we already got in a superior way in the intro um there's this whole thing with a boss that th we Goes spend nowhere. an awful lot of time with this yeah. boss and it doesn't pay off uh it's not like the jokes are worth it no even if the jokes were worth it you would have to question the presence of the scene <laughs> right. even if they were the best jokes in the movie you'd have to go eh, i don't know if we should waste the audience's time on this um that's the, there's two car rides where they convey essentially the same information mm -hmm. to our our dear friend cooper yes yeah who the nerd wouldn't have made it very far without Cooper. No. <laughs> <laughs> Frodo and Sam thing. Um, anyway, I, I, I digress. But yeah, I, it, I thought that like by the time you got to the midpoint and you and you started going through the AVGM movie. Oh, and that was that was a um, a revelation for me, too, when you showed the clips of him being. Because I was there, I was right there with him for whatever it was, three years when he was releasing behind the scenes clips. And I was like, geez, this movie sounds like it's really taking its toll. It's, hmm. it, it sounds like he's trying to finish it in his basement. Is everything OK? <laughs> um, I thought he flew out to L.A. with three hundred fifty thousand dollars, but he's finishing it in his basement. <laughs> That's when I started to like become kind of concerned. I was like, it looks like he's finishing it with like Play-Doh in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but by taking all of his stressors that he expressed at that point and putting them kind of closer together, you get a much clearer mm -hmm. picture of like. Yeah, by the time he was going, like, I wish it was over. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, I feel for him. I'm, I'm like, ooh. I'm at, like, I, it's not good to be trapped. No. I think he was, like, he was trapped at that stage. Yeah, no. it did feel like it broke his psyche. Like, <laughs> Yeah, mm. it was traumatizing. Like, I agree completely. Um, that's why, like, I, I wanted to take that time to just, like, show a lot of those clips in full because I feel like this is James' own words, basically saying like he's this movie is making him go nuts right now. <laughs> he just like it's, he's been doing it. He, he thought it was going to be done like way sooner. Like oh no, he was off by a year and a half basically. Uh, he's trying to yeah. juggle that with his kid. Like just it's just newborn child. I mean that's like oh, that's so much stuff. We all, and and we know something about having kids. Yeah, and well, once you have kids, you can't make any more content. It's <laughs> really hard. <laughs> yeah, you're your life's over. Mm -hmm. No, but there is. It, it, I'll, I'll give him this. Kids do change the change the tables of time. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and the uh, there's a year there especially where yeah you live a very disorganized life around your child and the sleeplessness is a major problem and yeah if you're also if you're asking the mother to like hey can you like shoulder this while I finish my my movie about uh, dark onward. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> like she's not gonna she's gonna be like i'll do it this time, this time. <laughs> after this movie 
uh, uh, after this movie, you're hiring some slobs. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, exactly. I think she hired the fucking slobs. <laughs> like, <laughs> she was like, get their asses get there in there. Get them in there now. <laughs> I found, I found this nice this company who will work with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, like they're very nice. I agree. Um because it's one of those things where I think cuz the other part after that where he's like I want it done, after where he's like my wife wants it done, uh we all want it done. Like that that was <laughs> yeah. almost like a Freudian slip in a way. It's like she wants yeah, that totally, shit done totally. now. Like, my wife <laughs> wants it done. No, look, I get it. No, yeah, I, I, I definitely I have a uh, I, I just found out today that um I got into a road race that's gonna be in New Hampshire and we found out somehow it I didn't figure this out. It's gonna be on my child's birthday. Oh. And my wife had ideas about what we were doing that mm-hmm. day, and they just got all screwed <laughs> up. And and she's really, 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 really supportive, mm-hmm. like of creative stuff and almost everything I do. And yeah, you're just like, I, I uh, am I really gonna with my like, mm-hmm. with, with my pet projects and stuff disrupt like a plan that she, ha- you know? So I'm sure I'm I'm sympathetic to all of mm-hmm. it. I'm sure our past podcasts have made us sound really unsympathetic yeah, to it. No. But we try to always give that its due. It's a, but much like your video, we often um, we don't get credit for it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of the headline culture thing. You yeah, know? it is. It's unfortunate. A lot of people are going to judge the thing based on like the the title, and that's it. Pretty much. Um, yeah, yeah. It ain't brief, and that, and that I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> let me ask you this: for so, if somebody were to, let's say that there was a, a young YouTuber out there who wanted to make uh, a really comprehensive doc about some special interest thing, mm-hmm. and they wanted to do it sort of in the style of of what you did, where. They, they didn't want to leave any stone unturned mm-hmm. and they wanted to kind of like leave it all out on the table. What's the, what, you know, I'm sure your process has evolved over time. Mm-hmm. What have you learned by doing this that you would now impart and say, all right, mm-hmm. here's how to get your head together on this. So the things I would do first off is like create a timeline from the beginning. That's the, like you need that like outline so like everything else you can fit everything else in between it um but you need that where did it start where does it end um and have the those dates like written down somewhere that way as you're adding in the details you know it's like it's i got this the the bones to add the meat to i suppose Mm -hmm. um as far as like stylistically um you know, I kind of try to go between the uh, edge of, like, being objective but also sharing my own um, personal, like, feelings with the thing. And that's kind of one of those things that I think is sort of a balance. Um, you kind of have to just strike with yourself and be honest with yourself. What do you want to say? Um, but I say always try to be fair as much as you can and think about all sides of the thing. Um, because I feel like doing that and taking time to think that through, um, really gives you a perspective on everything. And it, it leads to, uh, a, a, at least a stronger script in my mind. Cause I know it's a lot when, uh, YouTubers, cause I also, that's like my main sort of stuff I listen to. I listen to it while creating, while doing other things, while anything I'm listening to long form videos, podcasts, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I can always tell between the ones where they're like, this is like, I'm just, you know, I'm throwing my thoughts at the wall. And that's okay sometimes. Some people are really good at that. Um, and I, but I can also tell you, wow, this guy really thought about this from every angle. Um, and that, I think, you know, I think it especially is important when you're talking about being critical of something. Um, because it's very easy to come off as maybe... I don't know, not understanding or whatever else. That's why I, one of the points I want, I made during that part is whenever it's like, I have kids and like, yeah, that is totally an understandable point. And I, I'm, I would never criticize him on that. I don't, I completely get why he would want to spend more time with his kids. <clears throat> and this gives him an option to do that. Um, and so, cause others may, you know, like, you know, no, that doesn't, matter and there's other issues with it besides just that obviously um but there's i feel like it's throwing a bone once in a while it's like yeah that's a good point you know um oh yeah well i've said it here which is like well after 15 years what 
should he do it until he dies? Yeah. I mean, you know, like, yeah. He, he, he's, he's given an awful lot. Like what, you know, at what, at what point do you eclipse something that, that has no cancellation date? Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of YouTubers, you know, maybe similar to him, you can see a lot of them have evolved their content in like mm -hmm. certain ways, which and it feels like that he hasn't mm -hmm. or is just trying to make shadows of what he yeah. used to make. And so or he innovated, he innovated really quickly, like because there was a tremendous amount of innovation for the first mm -hmm. seven to 10 years or something mm -hmm. all the way up until a, you know, a, a motion picture. <laughs> right. right. It was really cool. It, yeah, it, board it, James so it's really kind of and... after the movie, the movie, the, it, 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 it does kind of ring. You know, I've heard people say this, too. It does, it does have a little bit of a Simpsons vibe to it, where it's like, mm -hmm. wasn't there a um, wasn't there a feature Simpsons movie yeah. in 2007 that already felt overdue mm -hmm. and we're still going on with this thing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have also heard the comparison to the Simpsons, and I think it's kind of apt at this point because it's just. It's not the same thing it was anymore. Um, and it kind of does feel like a hollow shell of what once was something so influential and significant. Um, and so you can't help but just feel like... Because like, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just sort of a sadness after a while. It's just like, ah. Uh, I almost wish he just like... I, I know this is what makes you money, so I'm not like going to be like, you need to end it. But I almost wish there was just some way that you could convince yourself, do something else creative, um, do a new yeah. series. Because this feels like a trap, and I can feel it every episode. <laughs> I've said, I've, I've, we've said it now many times on this show, but like, he, he is so perfectly positioned to like, all right, you built a hell of a fan base. I mean, believe me, mm -hmm. I know about his fan base because I hear from him <laughs> constantly. Yes. They're paying they're paying <laughs> my phone right now. Yeah. Oh, geez, I'm I'm a virgin. Yeah, my, Did you know this? My face <laughs> is ugly and looks drunk. <laughs> I look like Bilbo Baggins mixed with Toby the <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> And I laugh at my own jokes. <laughs> um so he's built this hell of a fan base mm -hmm. and my hope would be that he's amassed, you know, that, that, that his, his peak earning days, um, yielded a lot of money for mm -hmm. him. I don't know, but I would hope that because it's a relatively low budget operation with, with a relatively high subscriber count. And we know that he has, uh, he's, he's been sponsored for a good long while from screw attack to in, in video sponsorships and everything else. Mm -hmm. So he, it seems to me like he'd be perfectly positioned to be like, you know what? I'm going to kind of disengage a little bit from YouTube, from public consumption, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have a Patreon where I'm going to chase my whimsies mm -hmm. and I'm going to do my weird roller coaster horror movie and I'm going to, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to connect directly with the people who, who want to see me grow and mm -hmm. innovate the most. And, and, and I'll put some of it on YouTube, but I'm going to just, you know, I, and, and I think um, one of our po podcasts recently, we mentioned like, geez, really seems like the time to do Patreon, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of comments that were like, e-begging. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like it, 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 everyone from, from Google AdSense to NVIDIA sponsorships to live events to Patreon, they're all viable business models. Yeah. You can do any one of them. Uh, uh, obnoxiously, you can do any one of them wrong or in a way that turns off the audience, mm -hmm. but they're not on their face invalid. No. None of them are. Um, ridiculous. Yeah, uh, uh, e e yeah, it's just, yeah, you, you're cultivating a, a group and they can contribute if they want. It's and it's, it's fun. It's yeah, fun. But, We're all having it? fun. Are you, are you suggesting that somebody's being coerced <laughs> or something? Like, what's the, I don't understand. Everything's consensual and voluntary. Exactly. <laughs> um, like, I was going to say, too, because, like, um, when it comes comes to online content creation, it's, like, a lot of the media that I consume at this point. Um, a lot of the, my sources of inspiration come from other creators on YouTube. I think it does kind of comes from that fact. It's like, this is another guy or gal doing this thing. Um, and it's not, like, it's, not, it's different from, like, a movie or something where you can, you, obviously, you can enjoy a movie but it's like you can't make that by yourself there's like it's a million people that made this thing it's, it's almost like right. incomprehensible whereas with youtube it's so much more personal um yeah but yeah and i have i've you know i've donated uh patreon you know patreon um to uh content creators before in the past um 
that I, you know, particularly support. I always am still finding like smaller creators and stuff like that and like giving them a long detailed comment because i remember you know i'm doing a lot better now but i i think i've been doing this channel for about five years or so um oh awesome so um i think f officially uploading for about four or so but um yeah I I even how... uh, yeah I, I got a comment recently from a really huge youtuber and i was just like floored i was like Whoa! I mm. guess I, I'm gonna keep making these ideas. <laughs> gonna keep keep going. Like yeah. even you know, you never know who's watching. You never know. You really don't. So I think it really makes all the difference in the world sometimes. Because um, a lot of people are really putting their heart and soul out here on the website, and um, for, for, almost no one's looking. And that's okay. And you, you I think you know, eventually they will. Um, but it's it's definitely worth supporting. And so I I never like begrudge a creator if they're like, here's a Patreon if you wanna help me out with the things i i feel you i i, I get you for sure yeah and the, the 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 personal nature of youtube and, and of online content <clears throat> i feel like before online content that kind of had its roots in radio mm -hmm. or like morning radio yeah. you know where you spend a commute with somebody yeah and you could call you, in and you could actually probably talk to them <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah 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 where where you spend so much time listening to that person speak that you almost feel like they must know me. <laughs> right. you know, like, you, you, if something bad happened to them, you would feel like a genuine sadness. Yes. You know, where, like, like, a, like something actually happened to a friend. And and then, yeah, YouTube is a supercharged version of that because it's visual. And and it almost always – even the produced stuff or even the narrative stuff or the, or the pseudo-narrative stuff tends to come with, you mm -hmm. know, nonfiction, uh, unscripted type content. Um and so, for for all of those reasons, I don't think it should come as a surprise to anybody that that some of us might be passionate enough to actually like make make content about other content. Yeah, that's the other thing I've noticed is there's a stigma against that. Mm -hmm. Like, don't make content about other content. Yeah, uh, content must die r right where it is. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that as well. Um, I, I've gotten several comments, and I think again one of the Twitter threads is like, <clears throat> "How uncreative can you be to make content about other content?" It's like, well, I don't know. Um, I, it's something I'm really passionate about and I, I don't know. I feel like I spent a lot of time with it. It was fun doing it. Um, it, it seems like a really weird thing to get caught up on. It's, it's absurd. It's absurd. It yeah, it's, it's, I mean, for, there, there, there's, there's a million books about writing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> newspapers, newspapers <laughs> every day movie. write articles about stuff that's happening or yeah. artists doing stuff or all, all the way down, <laughs> all the way down to the fact that it's movie and video game critics that were making con content. So it's already about something else. Yeah. You know, it's absurd it's like, to, to, to suggest that you shouldn't be able to do yeah, that. Yeah. It's like so much of James like content is about other content, um, you know, movies, games, exactly. that sort of thing. Um, and whether he's playing a character while doing it or he's just being himself, it's that's the core foundation. Without that stuff, it, it doesn't exist. Um, right. And it's it, and it's also, you know, it's a, it's a, I, I just recently did a podcast with, with Hat Hole uh, Home Video and we talked about this a little bit. That it, it so often it's your way into a new audience mm -hmm. is like they you know you we, we've been making original content for a very long time on our channels mm -hmm. and uh, but it was by talking about something that people already knew about that made them go oh what are these guys up to let me check out some mm -hmm. other, you know and it, it, it's it's the it, going back to two thousand six it's the exact same thing with James where it was like oh I know TMNT mm -hmm. now what are you doing oh you're funny too <laughs> it's how it, it's 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 the warm handoff of content yeah. exactly. <laughs> I, th I think it's like yeah. something about that. Like it's, you can relate the person as well. It's like they they're talking exactly. about something I know about. Um, right. So like right. there's definitely that element to it. Um, and something else is that that's definitely been the case for me. Um, I think <clears throat> the first video that I made on this channel that like had any kind of virality <clears throat> was um, when I made a video on this YouTuber called Cybershell. Um, I love him. Yeah. Sonic guy. Yeah, exactly. I love him too. And so if he yeah. was gone for a good three years and after like the first year, I was like, I miss him. And I, my, I, I had my friend, um, other YouTube snickety slice. He's like, I miss him too. And so like, I was like, I gotta, I want to make a video about that. I, it was very random out of nowhere. Cause like, I wrote that in like 
a week or so. So it's wow. very kind of just off the cuff feelings about the whole thing. And now, like, is there any answers? It really wasn't as far as like what was going on. Um, but you know, I just wanted to just you know be open with it. And then that video ended up doing really well because a lot of other people felt the same way. And you know, it's like yep. it's like yeah, yeah. I, I miss that guy. Where where did he go? And without organizing a few thoughts about it, it's it's otherwise just some disorganized chaos that happened on the internet mm -hmm. that, you know, so there, there, there's something very satisfying about like, well, let me, let me take something that, you know, some chaos that we all experience and tell a little story about yeah. it. It's like the story of us. Yeah. Exactly. I, and that's exactly, yeah. um, the thing with my channel, um, at this point and what I like about like, uh, in other channels as well, is like, I, want my videos to like give you the whole story because it could very easily um i could have very easily made a video just about the screw like the screen wave drama um and you know that it would have been that but i was like you know from the beginning even when i was doing it in parts i was like i want to make a video or video series about the entire thing so that you could just get the whole picture if you were new coming into this you could completely understand um, now, that's not usually the case. Usually going to be people who've seen it. But theoretically, if you hadn't, you could understand who this guy is, why he's important, um, and, you know, why it's worth noting. Um, it actually, it, 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 at six hours, it is about, like, audiobook length. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could, you know, you could <laughs> release it as a, a podcast series. That is true. So if you released, if you released like, uh, six one-hour episodes or something like mm -hmm. that, and... And then it would, you know, so that you could have an audio version only, because um, a, 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 a six part podcast series is, some, I don't think people would, I think that like feels more normal for mm -hmm. its format and they wouldn't be like, this is insanity. Mm -hmm. um, just a thought, since you've already done all the work and, and the number one criticism is, is this video, pro this filter problem. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, that might, that might be a good way to exhibit it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, uh. I'll say this uh, finally about the video. My, I think my favorite part was you had you had an amazing analogy about the lights on the ceiling, <laughs> 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 which was uh, uh, the you know if I'm worried that my hat is gonna blow off, I'll staple it to my head, <laughs> and then I'll deal with I'll deal with all the problems of having a permanent hat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's that's well said. Uh, it's yeah. it, the, the the thing of the the lights on the ceiling. Um, it's I I do video uh, for my job, so like mm -hmm. I'm like striking lights, I'm striking like cameras all the time, tripods all the time. So now every time I do that, I'm thinking about those damn lights on the ceiling because <laughs> it's not that hard mm -hmm. to just put take a tripod and put it away yeah um especially like like i said this is my job and i do it every day so it's just like it's it's like it's mind-boggling that this is the thing that he does and he's like this is his solution yeah, <laughs> you know like it's like, like when that came out um that was when i was like still working on the script um and then that video came out oh no I'm gonna have to, <laughs> this is gonna have to be rewritten a lot now um uh, yeah <clears throat> i it, it it goes without saying that 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 video changed my life. <laughs> yeah. that behind the scenes video. <laughs> it was very informative, to say the least. Well, th there had been um, an increasing amount of criticism about like, hey, does he know what he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> it, it had kind of been the first time it had been asked. Yeah. Like, if, you know, anybody who's that successful and we've seen perfectly competent video production come from the channel for years. So I personally never really quite, when I would hear him say something idiosyncratic where I'm like, Oh, I don't think you should be using firewire for that, but mm -hmm. okay, whatever works. You <laughs> know, like <laughs> I, 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 I had never really dwelled on some of the technical details that he would sometimes toss in, but cinemassacre truth started to, there was like a very short period and it was before that behind the scenes video came out where they, they started to dwell on the behind the scenes video about, um, the, the making of the angry video game nerd video game mm -hmm. episode where they were like, we have no idea how to capture PC footage and the, you know, the, the workarounds and the solutions that they developed for that were so over the top and comical <laughs> and you were, and, 
<laughs> and it was the way that he, he was, they were describing it like anybody would have these problems. This is perfectly reasonable. This is like a, this is a good story to tell mm-hmm. the public. <laughs> Hashtag relatable. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it, it, and everybody's sitting there going like, you can, you can capture video screens very yeah. easily. You can get some OBS um, on there. <laughs> and so, it, yeah, yeah, it's, no, it's free. <laughs> you can do it. Just, just ask Ryan. Yeah. Um, but, but then, but then about a month later, he's like, and I staple the lights to the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think you also, there was one, one final thing I wanted to, to comment for the video. I think you tore at the very end, like in the, in the final 10 minutes, mm-hmm. you kind of, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you, you're like, you know, I don't think that becoming a commercial filmmaker was the right aim for James. Mm-hmm. It's like. He accomplished something far more innovative, something far more memorable, something far like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he has a much better place in history as an Internet content pioneer. He, he will have informed <clears throat> the next generation of, of artists, you know, video artists, mm-hmm. much more in this format than he would have as a commercial filmmaker. Is that kind of what you were trying to say? Yes, yeah, so it, it was because I, it's, it's one of those things that I, I, I genuinely wonder if James... Um, even aware of but i mean the entire generation after him basically were making videos because he made videos um so many content creators even ones that are extremely successful to this day well if you ask them who you know who inspired you to make videos they're you know they may name a few but one of the one that's always constant is him yeah and it's like that is significant i don't know anyone else who has that kind of pull on YouTube or even just in a lot of fears of like creation in general. So I definitely think that in for online content creation, he really is a pioneer. And I think he was almost hung up on an kind of an old medium compared to what he was literally like, you know, pushing forward with. Um, I I bet there are some legitimate filmmakers who started because of him too. Like, yeah. even though he, you know, would just be getting into video, getting into film, uh, learning that somebody like, you can see the seams of his videos. So it's like, Oh, that's how he did that shot. That's how he did that shot. And I'm sure he's inspired, not just like content creators, but like all sorts of mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, do yourselfers or indie filmmakers or even professional filmmakers. That's, that's one of the difficult things about art <clears throat> is, is you're not, always your best biography yeah you know uh, uh it, it, somebody else has to tell your story he he accomplished something incredible but he's not necessarily his best right. biographer on the, no. on the topic he he probably <clears throat> he probably does kind of wish that he had been a commercial filmmaker or or I don't, he clearly had i mean i i believe you actually played the clip in the video of him being like the goal is use the angry video game nerd movie as a stepping stone for commercial work mm-hmm. um and get out of this youtube stuff which is like, yeah. To me, I'm just like, no, no. man. Like, you, 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 you're, you're the king on exactly. YouTube. Exactly. Like, stay the, stay the king. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Great, great work. I can't wait to see. So, what if for people who don't know your channel, what else have you made? What would they be if they like this? What else is up there that they could watch right now? So, the other stuff on my channel, I think that you'd probably enjoy. The closest one to the AVGN right now is a documentary on an individual named Spax. Um, or Spax 3. He was a guy who was sort of an AVGN clone at the time. Um, But there is just, he was an innovator too, uh, but in a different way, he was the first, one of the first people to use and abuse the copyright claim system. Um, Yes. Um, So he's kind of not exactly a popular figure in that regard. Um, And his videos kind of had this, it's hard to describe without just looking at it, but I definitely recommend, I interview him in the video. Um, and there's a lot of parts where it's like his perspective on things. And it's one of those ones that I think it was kind of where I was really starting to get like, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. This, this is, you know, um, really fun to do and make and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's definitely one I'd recommend. Um, outside of that, um, I haven't really done these big, giant internet people documentaries as much because they take a little while to make. 
but the uh, there's three I'm going to be coming out with, um, hopefully over the course of this year. Um, one is going to be on um, the Irate Gamer, um, which I, th- I think is kind of you know uh, maybe an obvious choice to pick next. Um, and uh, maybe you could get maybe you could get him on too. I could. I might be able to. So I'm, I'm gonna see. I, d- um, does he still do stuff? I don't even. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. he does do he, stuff. He, does he, stuff. He, he's still doing that. It's also not the. It, it's not the best content in the world. I'm not here to no. tell you to go subscribe. No. But it ain't the worst either. No. It's it, he he's dr- he's dressed up his production a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like I, I recently watched like a a, a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror Game Boy Color episode. It's a Halloween show. It's very much a copy of James, <laughs> but you know what? I think new AVGN might be shitty enough. <laughs> I, I might prefer one over the other. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Mm-hmm. Don't, maybe. Not gonna put a stake in the ground, but. <laughs> um. And they do you know EJ that they've now collaborated those two? They cut they they. Um, they crossed the streams at long last. I, I I yeah I didn't I don't think I I think I missed that. Chris Bohr made a uh, he made you know one of his stupid videos yeah and then and it's James on the couch in the medium shot with the stapled lights and <laughs> and he's just like yeah <laughs> shitty game yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that, was <laughs> <in there. laughs> that was pretty much it yeah they, they, they just both like I like he's like doing his <laughs> and then yeah. um uh Bohr's is doing that weird thing with his mouth he's doing I, I can't yeah. I can't even <laughs> Dislocate Why my jaw. Why so many shitty games? <laughs> <laughs> shitty games. <laughs> shitty games. Everyone got say it again. Somebody, re- uh, uh, you you obviously know about our our I don't give a fuck, man. Yeah. Because uh, you used the clip in the video. And, uh, of course, our, our Discord was like, oh, you guys are in it. Because <laughs> we were all kind of watching it over the course of a week. And they were like, Red Crow Arcade is in the video. <laughs> yeah. um, now we're the crows now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's, we got a, we got a hand signal. Our, it's a claw. <laughs> our our friend Dan from Liverpool, who uh, who he he came up with the seed of I don't give a fuck, man. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the one who was like, yeah, maybe he's a I don't give a fuck, man. And he just talks about how difficult it is to make content. Uh, <laughs> it's terrible. It's a terrible impression of him. He's gonna be pissed. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, because that's really how I sound. Super Bob Hoskins voice. <laughs> your your um, favorite YouTube channel. Your favorite YouTube channel. Mm. He, he he was like, you know, it was it was six long hours, and I had a, a really great time watching it. And then EJ and Frankie showed up towards the end, and it was like coming back home. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, cool, man. So I can't. I'm 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 a sub. Mm-hmm. You're a dom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh. I, I, I'm I've totally. Totally sub to the channel because it's great stuff. I imagine because it takes so long, you probably the output is probably a little bit more rare. But I, I, I think it's a it's a great channel to subscribe to. Kind of like in that way. If uh, I'm sure a lot of people like gaming historian, mm-hmm. where you know you wait, but it's yeah. worth it. I think your channel is like perfect, perfect subscription well, material you. for that. That's sort a very of nice uh, comparison yeah. for sure. I, it was one of those things where yeah, Frankie mentioned the video, and I was like, oh, I'll just check it out. And so I like I watched you know I, I my trope of watching stuff while doing dishes and so i watched the first hour uh while doing dishes and and then i was like well i can't stop now so i made a bowl of popcorn <laughs> went to the went to the couch and cuddled up on my ipad and watched the like i watched like a lot of it that night so um mm. it, it, what you do is you sit next to your wife and you make her watch <laughs> it and if she kind of turns away to her phone or something you go no no you're gonna miss it and then <clears throat> And then you try to, you know, you pause it a lot to make it longer. <laughs> and then you, kind of, you and then you unpack more material and you try to help her understand possible memes that you may be yeah. showing her later in the day. Well, yeah, I'm going to make a, a 12 hour dissection of his content. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, good. Well, so, um, yeah, Dylan, the night owl, people should totally sub. It, it's a great job. When you make new stuff, we'd love to have you on again to talk about For it. Sure. Uh, if you, if you, yeah, you'll come I, on. Yeah. I um, besides Eric Gamer, I am eventually going to do a series on Nostalgia Critic as well. Um, I, I I would love to see that because the only commentary videos I've seen about Channel Awesome have been kind of fired up. Yeah. Over the, yeah, just the, the scandals. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just the. And scandals. I kind of want to see like I, I kind of want to see somebody take a big step back from the whole thing and consider 
much like you did for AVGN. Like, consider the totality of the thing. Yes. It's like, it's, it's going to take a bit. It's going to be in part. It's not going to be all in one video with this because it's... I don't know how the hell you're going to do it, Dylan. It's... Because <laughs> you, you're going to have to decide, like, am I just doing Doug? Am I also doing, like, you know, <clears throat> I guess I got to, you know, Link Hara's story is pretty important here, too. And then, fuck, there's Spoonie, isn't there? Basically, you're gonna have a it's going to be a lot because, yeah. right, honestly, right now, it's why I, I, I've started the the foundation of it right now but it's going to be nostalgia critic i have to talk about most of the popular people on the channel awesome and that guy with glasses um doug's other series that no one talks about because i i like bringing up that stuff um and then the movie you're talking about um you you you're are you talking about um what was it called? The the thing that he canceled Nostalgia Critic for, that like sketch show? Yeah, Demo Reel. Like, yeah. Demo gotta Reel. talk about Demo Reel. His other shows, like That Guy with the Glasses, The Show, or it's just like him bringing up Got things. It. The really early yes. days. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. You're, you're, uh, uh, sorry to, to keep going back to the video, but yeah, your, your dissection of, I thought it was really smart to include the collab, mm -hmm. the great collab as you mm -hmm. coined it. Um, I think a lot of people forgot about the the roots of that. Mm -hmm. I, like it, it, that could almost stand alone as a as a really strong clip, mm -hmm. um, it, as a reference point for people. So it, it, Dylan put together in the video put together a like here's kind of how the success of James Rolfe catapulted the success of Doug Walker, which is which is kind of you know, the, almost the its non own story, but, non success but it, it, of it, Captain it, S or whatever. His name is, or. Oh yeah, oh, yeah I, loved, I loved your you threw a lot of shade at Captain S. That was probably <laughs> see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about that is uh, me and my friends recently watched the whole series. There's only 13 episodes. Oh, wow. Um, and I'm definitely going to make a, a not not six hours, but maybe a a shorter video on it because I feel like it's like one of the like weirdest bits of creation, like the content around that time. Um, but I'd love, even though I threw shit, I'd love to get an interview um, with... Um, uh, Vanderbrook. Um, I love to. Let's campaign. We'll all we'll all come together, <clears throat> and we'll say this is for science. Yes, <laughs> Captain Captain Science. And see what I'd love. I don't know if he's. I don't know because I, I I've thought about this before. Like how I'd do it. I'd, I'd want to go through all the episodes since there's only thirteen. It wouldn't take that long. Um, the history, that sort of stuff, and then I'd want to. I'd I'd love it if I could almost ask him questions like address him as captain s or something like that once in a while <laughs> <laughs> can you please play your character when we speak <laughs> <laughs> please can you wear the jacket it, it's crazy man i i of course remember him and i remember that period and i re even remember that yeah that avgn episode with the with the bleeped swear and stuff mm -hmm. um and i agree ab about the comedic impact of like imagine if you know yeah <laughs> um but uh, if you had not brought up Captain S, I I would have gone the rest of my days. They, <laughs> yeah. they, they would have laid me to rest be gone. without me ever once thinking about Captain S ever again. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, it's just one of those things I like. We I like bringing it up with like people because it's like, do you remember Captain S? <laughs> and, and usually they're like, who is Captain S? But the few people that do, it's like. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I could. I... Well, it's because it's kind of like a near miss. It's almost mm -hmm. like. You know, it, 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 he fe he somehow fell short of Pat the NES punk. He did, yeah. <laughs> you know, Pat went on to Pat went out uh, went on to carve his own kind of niche thing. Mm -hmm. um, I do. By the way, I I really did. You ever see that that uh, documentary that Pat produced? Um, not for resale. Did you see that? I've not. So it's it, it, you know he I, I I think he he just played kind of an executive producer role where he helped get it made basically, but. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like him in that capacity where he's just sort of like an advocate for retro game content yeah. uh, rather than, you know, I, I, I think his, his podcast is, is fine enough. I, I, some people hate it. <laughs> um, but, but the, uh, I, anyway, it's a cool documentary. It's on Amazon prime. It's called not for resale. And it's just about physical versus digital. I have games. to check that out. But it's very, very, very well made. And they shoot it in and around our area too, Ooh. the Massachusetts area. Cool. Um, yeah, cool. So, um, We'll be looking for what you're doing. Thanks for thanks for making the time to chat with us. A, a couple of a couple of flunkies like <laughs> no, us. It was, fun. it was it was a lot of fun. Um, I had started watching you guys because uh, initially because I was like getting into Sin Mask of the Truth and really getting into that type of content. 
Um, and then you guys obviously would be brought up a lot on there. Um, and so that's how I started watching things. Like this clip would be perfect during a saying. And then I messed it all up by fucking putting an R in the name. No, no, no. no. It it's more memorable now. I, have a, I don't know if you know um, uh, Freddie Williams. He's, he's a, a comic book artist who who has done uh, uh, Batman versus Ninja Turtles and, and a number of other things. Mm. He's appeared on Red Letter Media lots of times. And he's a, he's a friend of ours. Oh, cool. And he, he, told, he told a story about um, when they adapted Batman versus Ninja Turtles, the, the uh, animated film, they misspelled his name in the, <laughs> in the credits. And, and apparently DC was like, oh, no, because it, like, it already started printing stuff. And he was like, I love it so much more that you misspelled my name. <laughs> like, he, he, he really delighted in it. And now, and I, and when I heard that, I was like, "What are you talking about? Like, get it spelled right." Now that I've seen Red Crow Entertainment, I was like, oh, "That's way better." Yeah. <laughs> Red, Red Crow Arcade, it's way better. And, and and of course, it has become in our personal lives. It's become a bit of a mess. Yes. Um, <laughs> so great. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, keep in touch, please. I will for sure. Um, like I said, anytime you guys want to talk about future content or just whatever, um, I'm down for it. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.